Heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. So you want to make sure that you have enough salt, potassium, and magnesium in your system if you want to perform well. It's very clear that moving weights or using bands or using body weight in the 30 to 80% of one rep maximum that is going to be the most beneficial range in terms of muscle growth and strength. What if everything you've been told about getting stronger was wrong? Most people believe strength only comes from grinding harder, lifting heavier, and spending endless hours in the gym. But here's the twist. Stanford neuroscientist, Dr. Andrew Huberman says that belief is flat out false. According to his research, you don't need brutal marathon workouts to see results. In fact, you can actually train less, recover better, and still build more strength and muscle, even well into your 60s, 70s, and 80s. The secret lies in a handful of science-backed principles that flip traditional training on its head. In this video, we'll uncover those principles step-by-step, step, showing you how to get stronger, faster, and smarter without wasting hours in the gym or putting your body at risk. Rule one, you don't need heavy weights to build muscle. Most people believe the secret to strength is piling more and more plates on the bar. But science and Dr. Andrew Huberman say otherwise. Perform anywhere from five to 15 sets of resistance exercise per week. And that's per muscle. And that's in this 30 to 80% of what your one repetition maximum. That seems to be the, the most scientifically supported way of offsetting any decline in muscle strength. If you're working in the kind of five set range and in increasing muscle strength when you start to get up into the 10 and 15 set range. Research shows that you don't need to train at the edge of your limits to grow. In fact, working with moderate loads, anywhere from 30% to 80% of your one rep max, can be just as effective for muscle growth as lifting heavy. The real key isn't the number on the bar, it's the effort behind each rep and how hard you contract the muscle. As Huberman explains, a wide range of resistance levels can trigger powerful changes in the nerve to muscle connection, driving both strength and hypertrophy. That means whether you're training with dumbbells, bands, kettlebells, or simply your own body weight, you can still unlock serious muscle growth without ever needing to max out. Rule two, you don't need endless sets to make progress, just five to 15 per week. Most workout programs pile on unnecessary volume. Four day splits, marathon sessions, a dozen sets per muscle group. It's exhausting just thinking about it. And if you're over 60, that much training isn't just unnecessary, it could actually slow you down. Whereas with strength, it's about using musculature as a system. A specific goal of hypertrophy is to isolate specific nerve to muscle pathways. The truth is you can spread those sets across the week in whatever way fits your life. Even one or two focused exercises a few days a week is enough to maintain and even grow muscle. And here's the best part, doctor. Huberman points out these numbers don't come from elite bodybuilders. They're drawn from real-world studies on everyday people, proving it works outside the lab. So if your goal is staying strong and building muscle past 60, you don't need to live in the gym. You just need the right amount of smart, consistent training, the right dose. Kindly do us a quick favor. If you find value in this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Your support keeps us creating and sharing more amazing health and fitness tips as this one. Thank you. Rule three, strength and size aren't the same thing. This is one of the biggest traps people fall into, especially later in life. Training for muscle growth when what they really need is strength or chasing strength when their actual goal is size. Dr. Andrew Huberman makes the distinction crystal clear. Recovery, that's when muscle grows, that's when muscle gets more flexible. None of that actually happens during training, it happens after training. If your focus is strength, the path is compound lifts, squats, rows, presses, and other movements that teach your body to work as one powerful unit. But if your goal is size, the approach shifts. You'll need slower, more controlled, isolated contractions that force a single muscle to do the work. And here's the insight that changes everything. The better you get at truly contracting a muscle, the fewer sets it takes to spark growth. It's not about piling on reps or chasing numbers. It's about intention. Decide your goal first, strength or size, and train with purpose. Rule four, real growth happens when you rest, not when you train. 
Most people put all their attention on the workout itself, sets, reps, and intensity, while forgetting the simple truth. Muscles don't grow in the gym, they grow afterward in the quiet hours of rest and recovery. That's when muscle grows, that's when muscle gets more flexible. None of that actually happens during training, it happens after training. And if you're over 60, recovery isn't just important, it's non-negotiable. Skip it and you risk burnout, nagging injuries, and stalled progress, no matter how perfect your program looks on paper. Dr. Huberman highlights two easy ways to check if your body is truly ready for another session. First, grip strength. If your grip feels weaker than usual, it's a sign your nervous system is still drained. Second, the CO2 tolerance test. If you can't comfortably hold your breath for long, your system may need more time to reset. These simple at-home tools give you a clear answer to the question, should I train today or should I let my body rebuild? Because sometimes feeling sore or sluggish isn't about weak muscles, it's your nervous system waving a red flag, telling you to rest. Rule five, don't sabotage your gains with the wrong kind of recovery. Here's the catch. Some of the things that feel great after a tough workout can actually work against you. Two of the biggest offenders, ice baths and over-the-counter painkillers like NNSA IDS. Dr. Huberman makes it clear, if you jump into an ice bath right after lifting, you could be shutting down the very progress you're trying to make. Why? Because inflammation isn't your enemy here. It's part of the growth process. Suppressing it too soon blocks the body's natural hypertrophy signals, including the MTOR pathway that drives muscle building. The same goes for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Taken too close to training, within about four hours before or after, they can dull those critical adaptations. So while these methods might ease soreness in the moment, they come at a cost. The smarter approach? Let your body recover on its own. Trust the process, skip the shortcuts, and allow that inflammation to do the work it's designed to do. That's how you turn effort in the gym into real, lasting strength. Rule six, creatine is a game changer for strength and energy. When it comes to supplements, few have as much solid science behind them as creatine. It's not hype. It's one of the most consistently proven ways to boost strength, fight fatigue, and speed up recovery, even in older adults. Dr. Huberman is clear on this. Creatine works. The other thing that's been shown over and over again in numerous well-controlled studies to improve muscle performance is creatine. For somebody who's about 180 pounds, five grams a day should be sufficient. Creatine seems to have a performance enhancing effect. There are 66 studies showing that power output is greatly increased anywhere from 12 to 20%. And this is sprinting and running and jumping as well as weightlifting by creatine. So what makes it so effective? It supercharges your muscles ability to produce energy, keeps your cells better hydrated and helps you push through resistance training with less exhaustion. The result, more strength, more endurance and better training sessions without needing to spend extra hours in the gym. If you're over 60 and want to maximize your results while keeping your workouts efficient, creatine stands out as one of the most reliable research-backed tools you can add to your routine. Rule seven, leucine is non-negotiable for muscle growth. Training sparks the signal, but nutrition provides the building blocks. And for older adults, one amino acid stands out above the rest, leucine. Dr. Huberman points out that leucine is the trigger for muscle protein synthesis the process your body relies on to repair and grow muscle tissue after exercise. When it comes to supporting muscle, it does seem that ingesting 700 to 3000 milligrams of the essential amino acid leucine with each meal is important. Now that does not necessarily mean from supplements. Yes, supplements exist, but Huberman stresses that whole foods should be your primary source. A balanced approach eating two to four times a day while ensuring you're getting enough amino acids. Works perfectly to support recovery, strength, and growth. And if you're plant-based, no problem. Just focus on protein-rich foods and make sure your meals provide the amino acids your muscles need. Bottom line, if you want to train smarter, not longer, fueling with enough protein, and leucine in particular, can make all the difference. Rule eight, salt and electrolytes supercharge the connection between your nerves and muscles. It's something most people miss. Your muscles can't contract with full power unless your nervous system is firing strong signals. 
And that process runs on one key ingredient, salt. Dr. Huberman explains that nerve cells use electricity to talk to muscles, and sodium is what allows that electrical spark to happen. Without enough of it, your brain simply can't send powerful signals to your body. The result, weaker strength, poor coordination, and sluggish performance. If you don't have enough salt in your system, your neurons and your brain and your nerve to muscle communication will. That's why the right balance of sodium, potassium, and magnesium is so important. Your needs will shift depending on how much water you drink, how much caffeine you consume, how much you sweat, and even the climate you're in. The takeaway? Don't fear salt when you're training. With enough electrolytes in your system, your muscles respond faster, your strength improves, and your workouts become far more effective, even on a minimalist plan. Here's the reality. Staying strong after 60 doesn't mean grinding harder, lifting heavier, or spending endless hours in the gym. Dr. Andrew Huberman, one of the world's top neuroscientists, says you can actually build real strength and muscle by doing less, as long as you train the right way. The formula is simple. Use moderate weights, aim for just five to 15 sets per week, and prioritize recovery. Support your body with the right fuel, creatine, leucine, and electrolytes. And you'll see results without punishing your joints or burning yourself out. As Huberman explains, it's not about heavy lifting for the sake of it. It's about training smarter, eating with purpose, and letting your body rebuild stronger each time. If this resonated with you, drop a like, subscribe for more science-backed fitness tips after 60, and share in the comments which rule you're going to put into action first.